लोग कह रहे हैं ऊबर डैम ऊबर डैम ऊबर डैम के बारे में कौन बताना चाहेगा टेल मी आज यू डू वाला से समथिंग अबाउट ऊबर डैम गो हेड इट ब्लॉक्स ऑल द वाटर फ्रॉम द और मैन दिस इज द वाटर फ्रॉम द कोलोराडो रिवर ओके दैट रिवर सप्लाइज ऑल द वाटर फॉर द साउथ वेस्ट रीजन ऑफ अमेरिका वाओ एरिजोना सदर्न कैलिफोर्निया नेवाडा कोलोराडो मास्टरपीस ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग ओके ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच माई बॉय ब्यूटीफुल दिस इज ब्यूटीफुल एक्चुअली आई मीन अदर साइड ऑफ वेगस आई डेंट रियली लाइक इट नो गैम्बलिंग ऑल गैम्बलिंग एंड डूइंग ऑल सोर्ट ऑफ ये सारे माउंटेन्स देखो कितने खूबसूरत हैं Oh wow. Oh wow, look at this. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Yippee. There's no tree. There's no what? No trees. No trees, yeah. There's no green We're in desert. Yeah. Okay. Just burn down everything. Fat ne ka bhi hai in desert. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Yeah. Oh yeah, no tree. We are in desert. <laughs> कितनी अजीब सी बात है नी गन्स हम क्यों गन्स लेके जाएंगे और जाएंगे नहीं अगर हम जाएंगे तो बताएंगे क्यों Why would I say yes? I'm carrying guns. Yes, I'm carrying guns. Yeah, I'm carrying guns. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uber Dam. Look at this dam. Oh, quick ticket me here. Calm down. Scenic view, chalne. Oh, baby, calm down. Have fun. Want to go scenic view? Yeah, I think we should. Scenic view. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. You won't melt my love. Oh, oh. You like hats? Yeah. yeah why? Hey, hi. Whoa, whoa, whoa! My child's burka. Without burka, it doesn't come out. Not my child. What? Oh, wait, I gotta take a picture. Can I take a picture of that, please? Can I take a picture of that, please? Can I take a picture of that, please? समझ लो कि आज 
भी हम विजिटर सेंटर जाएंगे अंदर और वहाँ पे प्राइवेट टूर लेंगे जिससे हमें और भी मालूम होगी इस डैम के बारे में लुक एट मैन इज हैंगिंग पार्किंग गराज कीप राइट कीप गोइंग वॉक करना पड़ेगा वी हैव टू वॉक ऑल द वे डाउन टू द विजिटर सेंटर आई गेस ओह दैट इज एलिवेटेड शुड बी आई थॉट द विजिटर सेंटर वाज ऑन द राइट साइड अच्छा वहां से वी हैव टू पार्क हियर So we have to go straight, right? Yeah, we have to go. Maybe ten dollars. Oh, you you have to pay here. Ten dollar dog. Yeah, we. Ten dollar here. Yeah, the entry ticket for the visitor center. Ten dollar is for parking. For, ah, ten dollar is only for parking. The visitor center तक जाने के लिए है ना? तो जब पार करेंगे तभी हम visitor center के अंदर जा पाएंगे. All right, welcome everyone. So my name is Adam. I'm going to be your power plant guy. We're going to be descending 537 feet down into Black Canyon. That is 70 second elevator ride. On the way down, you might feel a little pressure in your ears, like being on a plane. Yawn, pinch your nose, chew gum. It all helps. When we get down there, I'll take us into one of the four rigid diversion tunnels. Talk to you about the construction of the dam and what we do around here. We'll come back to the elevators, take a short trip up, head to the power plant. Never know what's going on in there right now. Uh, they are putting number three back together, so if you look down the way, you should be able to see something a little different. When we get done in there, we'll come back to the elevators one last time. Upstairs, be free to explore the rest on your own. Not too many rules. Uh, we're working power plants, and children have to stay by their parents' sides. There's no eating or smoking on the tour, but water is definitely encouraged. We have water fountain down there, power plant waiting on you. Uh, let's see what else got. Did you mention picture taking policy? He's checking it. No. That's good. We don't have any. Take all the damn pictures you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna laugh. It doesn't always work. Uh, kind of a fun photo on the way down. If you look at this, you guys are real careful. They're putting dynamite together. The guys left smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they were tough or just in here. <laughs> so, be touching now, just a sec, guys. Our first stop, right around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Enjoy. That's a nice little break. Yeah, right. <laughs> Definitely. We like it out here in the summer. Here we are. Thank you. 
So for the folks who have ride down with me, my name is Adam. I'm going to be our power plant guy. We're actually standing right here. We're inside one of the four regional conversion tunnels. Now each tunnel is 50 feet diameter finished. They're roughly 4,000 feet long. It took nearly two years to blast out a solid bedrock. The initial purpose of those diversion tunnels was to move the river away from the project during construction. It would have been difficult for concrete in a moving river. Now to move the river, they put in what's called a coffer dam. There's two sections. The upper dam forced the river into the tunnels and around, while the lower section stopped the river from backing up into the area. Once they were in place, they pumped the water out of the entire area, dug down 135 feet to the hit bedrock. That basically became the foundation for the dam. When construction started, buckets containing eight cubic yards of concrete were lowered down from above on the average of about every 78 seconds. Now that went on 24 hours a day, seven days a week for almost two years. Everyone's seen a cement truck, right? Drum on the back. That's about the size of the buckets we're hanging over these guys' heads. 16 tons of concrete in each one. So I imagine it got pretty scary down there. Near the end of the completion of the dam, they began to fill Lake Mead. It's our nation's largest man-made reservoir. To fill the lake, they closed off three of those diversion tunnels, but one did remain open, which allowed some of the river to continue downstream. Of course, people down here were studying water. Now as the lake began to fill, water started going into our four intake towers. When you look out across the lake, you'll see the things sort of look like castle tops. Those are our intakes. Once water started going into them, <coughs> pardon my allergies today. Once water started going into them, they closed off the last diversion tunnel. Now they can take advantage of all that water being requested downstream and actually run it right through both sides of the power plant. The goal was to make as much money back as possible to pay off the original loan. It was a depression, money was pretty tight, so the Treasury Department had a couple rules. The loan had to be paid off in full with interest within 50 years, and they couldn't use any tax dollars, sort of. They got the loan, but they had to be reimbursed. Now how'd they accomplish that? They put in our power plant. We take advantage of the water we're sending down on behalf of the people to produce our power. Even a day keeps us off the tax dollar. We're a non-funded federal facility. Nobody's tax dollars come here. We actually pay the majority of our bills in house, basically by borrowing people's water for a few seconds. So it's kind of a cool system. When water goes into the intake towers, it goes into 30 foot diameter penstock pipes. We're standing above one. If you have a peek over the sides, you can see it out there. Each one of these pipes can handle up to 96,000 gallons of water per second. Just one pipe will fill an Olympic sized swimming pool in under seven seconds. So it kind of gives you an idea how much water we can move around, if we have to. We don't do that all the time, but we can't move a lot of water. Those pipes reduce in size all the way down to 13 feet in diameter. That's where the water spins the turbines at the base of the generators where it drops right back into the river. Initially, the lower dam was blown up. They removed it so the river could move down unobstructed. And the upper coffer dam is still on the bottom of the lake today. They just saved some money and didn't take it out. Two other really important things at the dam are the spillways. We have Nevada Spillway and Arizona. Both were built just a little bit lower than the height of the dam. The reason they did that is the last thing I want Lake Mead to do is get so full it can go over over. You can't safely manage water that way and ruin the power plant but we also can't provide flood control. That's our main job. So when the lake gets full, instead of going to the top, it just flows naturally into the spillways. It's regulated downstream that way and bypasses everything. Now the spillways have only been used twice. The first time was in 1941. That's the first year they filled the lake up. The only reason they did it was really just to test everything. It worked out really good. Second time was in 1983. That year, the Rocky Mountains had an incredibly large snowpack on its western side. It was a lot bigger than they anticipated for the season. I guess where almost all of our water comes from. Snow from the west side of the Rockies. From spring and early summer, the river just got out of control. The lake feels as shy as seven feet from one of the top. But as planned, it went into the spillways. They regulated downstream that way for 63 consecutive days. That saved a ton of property damage down the river, but most importantly, it saved lives. Going back into why they built the dam, which is flood control. So, so far, we're doing a pretty good job. I like this line. It gets you guys for a little extra time. <clears throat> um, in a nutshell, how the whole system works. Um, we'll start back before they built the dam. When we started talking about putting the dam in, everyone along the river showed a little concern because they were generally worried about once they got Lake Mead, what was going to happen to their water? Would it be taxed? Would it just something out of the ordinary? Everybody along the Colorado was using the Colorado South to grow crops to feed their families on. So they wanted to make sure they were still going to get their water. So basically they said, no, go away. We don't want it to happen. Our Secretary of Commerce at the time, Mr. Hoover, later the president, said, hey, let's all sit down and figure out how to do the river. That's what the government's for. Help us negotiate how to do this stuff. You can't tell us what to do. It's up to the states under what we say to do. We all know the rules. So that's what we did. We got seven states on our side, Mexico, all shut down. How do we share this river here? We got a lot of water, but we don't have enough water for everything all the time. And they realized as the countries grew, same water, more people, definitely wouldn't be enough. So they stuck with the basics, drinking water and irrigation only. That's all the river is supposed to be used for. It's in the state's hands, it's the honor system, but pretty much everyone plays nice. We also do something else which nobody's just catching on to, and I don't get it. They found it kind of wasteful letting excess water go in the ocean. They didn't use it all up that year, off it goes. Makes no sense. Depending on how you look at the world, it could be toxic environment, definitely costly and expensive to get it back. If you got somewhere to store it up in your lakes and reservoirs, why not hang on to it? And if you gotta let the leftovers go. 
There's no reason if you've got a river going to the ocean, why every one of your lakes and reservoirs should be just completely full to the top and there's no more room, you've got to let the lefters go. Sadly, nobody's doing it. Um, I get to talk to people from folks all over the world every single day. The big top thing is when we see Lake Mead, they're like, oh my crowd, look how bad it looks. And I explain, well, yeah, we're in a drought. But what they did was they just cut the Colorado River off. Basically, any leftover water we have, we throw up and down the system. Almost everyone I've talked to that lives coastal anywhere in the world in the past eight years I've been here at least, um, I ask them how the lakes and reservoirs are doing with that river going to the ocean, and most people don't even think they have enough water to get into the next season because of those topics of the day. We don't know what the future holds. We stay away from the genre and so that. But that's not the point on the subject, is if you got somewhere to store your water, do it, because when you get in the ocean, it's my, you might not be able to get it back. We've proven that here. The Colorado services about 60 million people every single day with their drinking irrigation water. 30% of the produce in the entire country comes from our water. <clears throat> Mainly Southern California, Arizona, but everyone kind of pitches in. 70% of the nation's winter crops. And if we hadn't stopped letting out excess water in the ocean, we'd never have any water in the first place. That just goes back to the timetables from all the past and all that. Native Americans were telling us as soon as we got out here, they were crazy because shoot, there's plenty of times where for years and years in the droughts, no water on the flip side. A lot of times they had to move away from the Grand Canyon because there were so many years of excess snow, they're getting washed away. So it's a neat system. Start hanging out on water. It's a pretty easy thing to do. Doesn't matter how much money you have in bank, you don't have any water, you can't feed your family. And we're just kind of went back to the basics and works really good. Okay, right, guys, let me get back to the elevator so this arrived. Um, we're going to take you two elevators up, so if you don't have to get on the same elevator, don't freak. We're still going to the same place. Um, while we're waiting, I'll answer the questions you guys have. So let me get up front. Come over here. Bridge with here, top right there. See, This is mommy's favorite place. Yeah. Yo, it's this Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so mommy could have come here with you guys. Mommy has missed the opportunity, lifetime opportunity, to be here with us. It is what it is. Hey, I'm not going to get my phone down. Have you looked over? It's when they release it. They control when they can drop the water. Oh. Yeah, they are releasing it. Releasing it right now? No, no they're not. No, nah, they are not. I don't think they're making the electricity. Water is still. So you, we saw the turbines is down there. The water, they have, I think they were saying that these things, towers here, they're the giant pipes that redirect the water around, right? And if they could send some of it down to the power plants. But yes, these two towers and those two towers, they're collecting the, the water. Very interesting. Let's go fishing. Yeah, we can't go fishing. Yeah. You, oh, really? We can? Yeah, what do you think they're doing down there? Oh, they're wow. Yeah. 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 Ye
100 miles of the Colorado River system, beginning to end with all the dams. The 10 minute narration discusses where the water and power ends up and a bit of history. Thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy. Be like a trip, trip back in time. <laughs> 